Hello everyone. It gives me an immense pleasure introducing to you Dr. Fulvio Porta. Hi Dr. Fulvio. Hi, hi everybody. So Dr. Porta is one of the pioneers in the field of bone marrow transplants. He is head in the department of pediatric hematology and bone marrow transplants at Brescia, Italy and he is a visiting consultant in the department of pediatric immunology and bone marrow transplants at Astra CMI Hospital Bangalore and he is a person who has got 35 years of experience in the field of bone marrow transplants has performed more than 700 transplants to date and is available to us today fortunately to share his experience on the same so dr porta to our audience out there uh, can you explain what is bone marrow transplant is a very important procedure that saves a lot of lives has been uh, discovered and used the first time 50 years ago and saved the life of a child who had uh, a severe immunodeficiency that now is a father of two children so it was a great success ever since thousands of transplants have been performed worldwide and is now a therapy of choice in several diseases why because several diseases can affect the blood bone marrow transplantation means to change the whole blood because there is a problem which problem can be different for instance everybody knows and the name is terrible is leukemia but leukemia if it's not cured with conventional therapy can be cured by bone marrow transplantation and the results are very good but not only leukemia even if the bone marrow doesn't work so some of the cells of blood are not functional or not enough we can just change the bone marrow and give it new well you have had 35 i would say 35 long years of experience in this field and i should say the field has grown as you have grown with the field so would you like to share how different it was 35 years ago and have the results become different uh, in the field of transplants the things has changed dramatically uh, this in a positive way because uh, 50 years ago they hardly know who was a donor for this child that became a father with two children, so it was cured. But uh, that was possible because just the year before, a very smart doctor discovered compatibility. So discovered that bone marrow transplantation can be performed only by a compatible donor. And that was the assumption, so what they thought 50 years ago. And the progress went on and this assumption is not true. We can give a donor to everybody now. What has changed dramatically? The fact that we can just find the donor in the family, can be one brother or sister that is by chance compatible. In a population like in India, where sometimes there are people that are married, people of the same family, it's possible that the mother and the father re result compatible with the child and moreover we have now other chances there is the bank of donors bone marrow donors in india there are at least four banks and it's growing and growing the number of volunteer donors means adults that said yes if somebody needs my bone marrow i am ready to give it and they are not giving it immediately it's just a possibility if one day 10 years after a child will be identical to the donor the donor is called back, say, you sure you want to donate bone marrow? And he can save the life of a child without losing his. Because in other transplants, like heart transplant, kidney transplant, liver transplant, always the organs are taken from somebody who unfortunately is not with us anymore. But bone marrow transplantation is an act of solidarity. So big, you save the life of a person and you stay in hospital half a day and then you go home. So that is the most important change that has been done. But the second one is that the doctors became more and more good in assisting the, the patients. The antibiotics get better because to change bone marrow means that there is a part of, uh, of the life of a person where there is no more the old bone marrow and not 
not, it's not arrived the new bone marrow. So it's 20 days where the patient who received bone marrow transplantation is completely without anything. And after hospital, there is a specific uh, unit that preserves the life of these patients where bone marrow transplantation are regularly performed. And so the patients are absolutely covered and there's no problem. And this is another thing that changed in the old times when I started, because the isolation of the patient was not as good. Antibiotics, antifungal drugs, because this patient has fear of everything, every single virus, fungi, everything. So you have to have new drugs, and at the time new drugs, and we have new drugs. And this is the second uh, item. And the third one, is that now there is technology that helps us very much in uh, uh, transforming the cells, taking the cells of the donors, and that can be done here in Astor Hospital. You can just, into brackets, compatibilize the cells. Even if the donor is not compatible, our scientists in the lab, it takes hours, but after, can give a suspension of cells. There is no arm for the patient, and they are, in fact, uh, compatible. Nice to know that. So, what 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 has happened over the last thirty years or more has not only changed the science, but I am sure has increased the success as well in this field. What interests me is primary immune deficiencies. That is where I I come across in this science. Now, when it comes to primary immune deficiencies, a subgroup of these patients do require a bone marrow transplant. And I am aware that you have done more than 250 of bone marrow transplants only in immunodeficiencies. So how different are these children from the other children who undergo transplants? I must admit that on these children, we maybe just to be paradoxical, we mismanage these children because uh, sometimes we didn't recognize they were ill because they presented with uh, uh, cough, gastroenteritis, the infants and so us doctors we think that's normal. An infant can have this, but doesn't have to last too long. So we have to be careful to the symptoms. And for a long, long time, these children died with a, without a diagnosis, without being uh, understood completely. Moreover, doctors were not good enough to read the blood tests and to just discover that sometimes these children do not have enough cells to protect themselves. So, uh, some children with immunodeficiency, and I told you that 50 years ago, the first transplant has been performed in a primary immunodeficiency. A child who was born from a family that has a disease, and he didn't have T cells, didn't have the cells against normal infections. This child died within a year of life. So it's easy because they fail to thrive, they are very thin, they do not eat, they are continuously infected. <coughs> My primary immunodeficiencies are uh, rare diseases, so they are not very common, but are very many. So few diseases, few cases for many diseases. So this requires more attention. You require a very good immunologist, a very good lab of immunology, as Astor Hospital can offer. This is one of his points more important. But as well, once you've done diagnosis, you always have to propose something. You can't go to a patient and say, you have primary immune deficiency, goodbye. You have to say, what's next? And what's next is now more and more bone marrow transplantation. But we are discovering the indication means who has to do the transplants. Every year, with new diseases, what was the error? I, myself, I did in 35 years of uh, my profession that, uh, let's say, 15 years ago, some diseases, some children with certain diseases came to me and said, uh, oh, my neutrophils are not working. This is a famous disease it's called chronic granulomatous disease. These children have very severe infection, but we thought they do not die within one year, they do not die within five years, so it's okay. They will live for a while. But that's a mistake, not for a while. The person has to live for good. And so if you do the transplant, 
you can save the life of these persons that normally have big problems by the age of 30, 25. So, as a young adult. So, as compared what we did 30 years ago, now we are more, atten more paying attention to what is the quality of life of this person. But why is that? Because once upon a time, as you say in the fairy tales, the survival of the transplant was 60%. Means you transplant 10 people, 6 survive. 4 do not survive. So for disease like this, it is not leukemia. That's not enough. So the techniques, the donors, the protection from infection, raise this curve to 90%. So, so if you can offer to a patient 90%, that's become very interesting. If you say, well, my disease, I can survive 25 years, or I do the transplant when I'm three years old and I have 90%, I'll be cured for good. That's the major difference that happened in the years and within the years. In certain cases of immune deficiencies, especially severe immune deficiencies, we see patients are brought in a sick state and we often don't have time to get an appropriate donor for transplants. Uh, we look for the siblings but there is no sibling match and the bank takes a lot of time. In such cases of emergencies, what, what are your suggestions on transplants? It's a very good question because it uh, gives me the opportunity to say that perform transplants in primary immune deficiency is not easy because uh, as compared with leukemias, when they receive transplant, they are in remission or they, they are at the maximum their strength or when they are doing fine. Most of the time the child with immune deficiency comes to us to receive transplant being infected, being unwell. So it requires a quick uh, decision and we have to find a donor as soon as we can. And so again, the technology, the new times, gave the, us the opportunity to offer a donor to everybody. They are the parents. So we can uh, always choose one of the two parents and it will be an optimal donor. The results of the transplant from the parents now are more or less the same one of the bank. And again, here at Astor Hospital, the transplant can be uh, realized immediately. Sure, good to know that. Thanks. Thank you. I think Dr. Fulvio Porta has made it very clear that as decades passed by, not only the indications of bone marrow transplants have changed, but even our success has changed. And today, many of our patients can be transplanted, if transplanted at the right time, with a success rate of around 90%. And with the guidance of Dr. Porta, with a lot of experience down there at Aster, I am sure we will be able to treat many more such children. Thank you, Dr. Porta. Thank, Thank you for you your time. Thank you.